With less than two months to go before launch, make sure you're also keeping track of the progress on Arabella's tender, Victoria. Bob Emser has put fiberglass and paint on the hull and is moving right along over on his channel, The Art of Boat Building. And in Granby, the whirring of the grinders finally give way to the sounds of hammering cotton into the plank seams. This week, Steve will walk you through in detail why he caulked Arabella the way he has. And if you're nearby this weekend, April 29th and 30th, come by the boathouse for the longboarding party and take a turn on the torture boards and help put the final touches on the hull fairing before the paint goes on. Sidewalk Chalk turned out to be a useful guide for sanding and grinding, and Steve and crew eventually came up with a color system for both the high and the low spots. One of the main quirks with Arabella's planking is that she is planked in heavy, dense, hard white oak instead of softer, lighter cedar. So there's kind of a size differential that you see. Once a boat gets to a certain size, you see it switched over to oak planking, which is harder, it's denser. We can really wail on it, and it doesn't really want to dent or compress. 
the cedar's a lot lighter. And if we wail on it, it breaks and shatters and dents very easily. And the cedar we have is not the greatest cedar, uh, which doesn't impact in its terms of how hard it is to hit, um, but it did impact how well it wanted to bend around the curves of Arabella. So if we were to plank the boat totally in cedar, it would change how we cock the boat. And that has to do with how soft the cedar is and how easily it crushes and how little it moves compared to the oak, which doesn't like to crush and which is very hard and likes to move a lot. So we're trying to keep that in mind uh, as we cock the hull. So these are the two main guiding lights for the build. There's Larry Pardee's Classic Boat Construction and Bud McIntosh, How to Build a Wooden Boat. And both of them talk quite at length about caulking seams and bevels. And I think Larry explains it better. So if we look here, this is what you would call a traditional caulking seam. So it's tight for two thirds and you have one third open and you hammer in some cotton and it makes a little ball right there, which is your gasket and seals things up. And now you have B where you have one third tight and a longer, narrower angle and the cotton goes in a bit deeper. And then you have C, which is not a traditional way to do it. Um, and you just have an angle that goes all the way, one little edge that meets, and the cotton goes very deep. So this is what you traditionally see. This is pretty common, and this is oftentimes frowned upon. But if you read Larry's book here, this is actually Larry's preferred caulking method. And with Arabella's planking being oak, I think that going with this style, which is what we did, I think is a better decision um, with the oak planking and with the dry stock that we have. So Larry says, method C is what I use for Seraphin. Her planking was kiln dry, dark red Philippine mahogany, and she had no frame separation after 11 years and 50,000 plus miles of ocean voyaging. Instead, the inside corners of the plank seams crushed together and raised a slight 132nd inch mound of wood along many of the underwater seams. I firmly believe this crushing of the inside corner of the plank relieved the breaking strains on the frames. So what Larry is saying here is that in seam style A, when this plank and this plank swell, you have great wood contact here and that swells tight, but it ends up putting incredible forces on the frame, you know, which is right here and fastened through. And as these planks swell up and down, our frame, the grain is running the other way and it is shrinking and swelling widthwise. So you have two competing forces here. And if you plank a boat of Arabella's size with dry oak and were to do this style seam and all of that oak swells, there's no relief. So what Larry is saying is by doing seam C, this area here is actually somewhat fragile. And as this plank swells and this plank swells, this section in here crushes and relieves some of that pressure and creates just a tiny little bulge on the inside. And with Arabella's oak planking, this is what we're more hoping happens. Uh, and Larry talks about screws being better than rivets in terms of planks shrinking and swelling and the forces that they put on the fasteners. And he also talks about boats that were planked too tightly with kiln dried lumber and having the frames break and pull up to a quarter inch apart, uh, which is one thing that I am terrified of and I really hope doesn't happen with Arabella. Now, if Arabella was 50 years old and these planks had shrunk and swelled and shrunk and swelled, they end up becoming what boat builders call tired. And what that means is that the cells in this wood have been crushed and swelled so many times that they no longer have the same elasticity and they don't bounce back and swell as much as they used to. So you end up with seams that no matter how wet this planking gets, it won't close up because you've ended up just crushing the planks over the years. Now Arabella's never swelled, she's only shrunk. So that means that we have full elasticity and when these planks go in the water, they're gonna swell right up. So on a seam like this, we can tuck the cotton in there 
let this plank swell and let that plank actually crush that cotton down and tighten that up. Where, where we have a narrower seam that's up above the water line, that's where we do want to hammer in the cotton and harden that up a little bit because these planks aren't going to swell as much. They're not going to get as wet. And they're also going to go through more shrinking and swelling cycles being above the water. The ones below the water, ideally, they get wet, they stay wet. Taking the boat out of the water every year is something that would be really hard for Arabella. She wouldn't handle it well because this oak planking is going to move and shrink and swell and move and shrink and swell, which stresses the fasteners, it stresses the frames, and it makes it so that these planks eventually get tired. So if we look at some of these gaps here, you know, we're at an eighth of an inch open. If we go lower here, we get some bigger gaps. This one's really open. And here we're, we're at a solid quarter of an inch, which is the outside. We don't have a full quarter inch to go on the inside. And if we take our moisture meter here, stick it into our planking, we are at 12%. Come up and check here, 12%. Twelve to fourteen. Twelve to fourteen. And when these planks go in the water, <clears throat> I can pretty much guarantee they will be much higher than twelve to fourteen percent. Woodweb is my reference, and they have a lumber shrinkage calculator. So they say quarter sawn oak moves about five point six percent. Flat sawn oak moves around ten point five percent. Now, if you compare that with cedar at 2.9 and 5.4, you know, or pretty much half as much movement with the cedar. So if we have a five inch oak plank, which is about what we have here, and we bring it from 25% moisture down to 12, or from 12 up to 25, either way you want to cut it, a quarter sawn board is going to move about an eighth of an inch. And if we do that out of a flat sawn board, we're looking at a quarter of an inch. So essentially, every single one of these planks you see here is capable of each individual plank expanding somewhere between an eighth to a quarter of an inch, uh, which is way more than what we have in terms of gaps and openings. So to get these lower planks swelled up enough that we can caulk, we only need to bring them up a few percentage. Uh, we don't have to go very far with it. And then when the boat goes in the water, all of this oak is going to behave like the oak in a barrel and is going to swell and is going to create tremendous pressure between the planks and it's going to crush that cotton and it's going to crush that inner edge of the planking. And if there's nothing, if, <clears throat> if it's all too tight, something will have to give. A frame will have to break, fasteners will have to go. If there's enough room and we have enough of a sacrificial layer in the back there that can crush down and compress a little bit, then everything will swell really tight and we'll have a nice dry hull and all will be well. So that's kind of the balance that we're trying to walk here as we go through and plank this oak hull. Now, if this planking was two inches thick and it was on a schooner with six inch sawn frames and giant wooden trunnels, I would say cock the daylights out of the dry oak and go for it. It's going to be plenty strong enough to hold it. Or if this boat was planked out of cedar, I would say go ahead, cock it. The cedar's not going to swell that much and it's going to compress. But because of the size of the frames and because of how dry the oak is, we're trying to be really cautious about how much cotton we put in there uh, and allowing these lower planks to swell up and not just fill them with cotton.
So above our red pink line here, everything on this side of the boat is caulked and it is all hardened up. And these lines that you see going down the planks were just markers for me of what sections of the boat I had and hadn't caulked and where I left off on so that I have a good reference. These lower planks need to swell up a bit and then we'll caulk and paint those. And these seams are all hammered in with the cotton and they are all painted with some topside paint which helps keep the cotton in place for the time being and helps keep the cotton clean because we still need to come through and longboard the hull and we need to bung all of these holes and nip those off which is going to create a lot of sawdust and we don't want that sawdust getting attached to the cotton so by having it painted the cotton will stay put and it'll be a lot easier to keep it clean the uh, cotton won't be velcroing itself to every single little wood fiber and dust in the shop and then after things are bunged and sanded and done with the final fare these will get filled with a flexible paying compound uh, and then we'll paint the hull over that but the seams on arabella because the wood has swollen and shrunk and just because we didn't do that amazing of a job getting consistent caulking bevels the bevels are all a little bit different the gaps in the planks are all a little bit different so what i've been doing is i've been going through and just this seems pretty open stuff and cotton and I just typewriter across the boat the stuff clean from one end to the other and get a section about yay big so that all the seams are stuffed and the cotton is just tucked inside but the cotton isn't set or hardened and then once those seams are all tucked in then I can walk down and hit a seam that's tight and then go to one that's a little bit looser and work my way down the boat and harden that caulking up. So it means that I'm going over the same seam two or three times, um, but as a very beginner caulker, first time doing this on a hull, um, it's allowing me to be a little more confident with it and really feel what's going on. Um, when you're putting the cotton in by hand, you can really feel how much pressure is there and feel what's going on in the back. Uh, and when you're hammering away at it, it's, it's a little bit tougher to feel, and that's uh, more of an acquired skill that I have not acquired. I'm also caulking with just a mallet. Can I bring that over here? So this is a very dusty, <laughs> traditional caulking mallet. So round handle, metal rings, slits, more metal rings. What do the slits do? Depends on who you ask. A lot of it has to do with the feel and the sound um, and the sound that they make. I personally find this very cumbersome to use and coming through and I don't know. I'm going to hit myself in the boat about as many times as I hit the iron with this. I can see where if you're caulking as a profession and you're swinging this 10, 12 hours a day, five, six days a week, um, I believe that you get really in tune with the sound and I'm sure that there's something about how you swing this that is great for your body. Um, but I am very comfortable with the round carving mallet. Uh, and I have a very good feel of how much force I'm putting with this. And since I'm caulking one boat and then not caulking another boat for hopefully a very, very, very long time, uh, I'm not too worried about the wear and tear on my body of using a mallet as opposed to maybe some relief that I would get by using more of the traditional caulking mallet. Uh, as Bud McIntosh says, my mallet doesn't ring, but he's caulked a lot of boats and they were all okay. <laughs> Man, I'm not happy the mosquitoes are out. No. I'm happy for the warm weather, but I'm not happy to have mosquitoes in my ear. And if you're interested in some more uh, experienced information on caulking, 
Uh, Lou Sazed, who does tips from a shipwright, he's done a lot of information on caulking. And he's been doing it, no joke, longer than I've been alive. And then another one would be the Port Townsend Co-op. So they caulked the Western Flyer, and they also caulked Samson Boat Company's Tally Ho. Uh, and those would be two good resources if you want to learn a bit more about this. Uh, Andrew, who's restoring Rosalind down in Mystic, Connecticut, he just wrapped up caulking, and I think he's putting out a video on that soon. He would be another one, good one. He's been caulking a long time. Um, I'm very confident with what we're doing here and the planking and stuff for Arabella, but like I said, depending on new bolt, old bolt, how it's planked, how it's framed, the caulking is going to be a little bit different for all of them. It's pretty nuanced. So we need to join another one here, so I'm going to split this one in half. Pull out a new split. And I'm just going to roll this a couple times. We don't want it to turn into a rope, but we do want it to have a little bit of a twist to it. I'm going to pull out about half the strand up here and meet those together and twist them up. Essentially what we're trying to do is make it so that the cotton doesn't suddenly dramatically change in diameter. Be a little careful with that split. And we're off to the races. So this is what I've been doing. It's going through, tucking it in, coming back over it. And not I'm not setting it. I'm literally just tapping it hard enough to put it back into the seam. can also do this part of it with a roller like we did on the deck. So now that's all tucked in and I've got from here to here all tucked in and then I'll come back and harden them up. Now if I was really good at this, you would hook the cotton in your fingers some weird way and you would Pull it up, fully set it, go to the next one, fully set it, and you'd have multiple seams going at the same time, and you'd just march your way down the boat. Uh, but I am not nearly that confident with it. So this is tighter. I'm having to tap it a bit harder to get it in there, but still not crazy. We've got one, two, three, four seams that need to be hardened up. And I'm going to do these by the order of tightest to loosest in the sections. So we'll cock this top one first, and then this one, and then this one, and this one last. Because if we were to cock the most open, we would end up pushing these planks up ever so slightly, and these seams would get smaller. And what we want to do is make sure that these really tight seams don't get any smaller, and if anything, we end up pushing these more open seams ever so slightly a bit more closed. And we're talking millimeters here, very, very, very small amounts. And what we're trying to do is get this cotton half to two thirds of the way into the plank. The last thing we want to do is pop the cotton out on the inside of the boat. That would be really bad. We don't want to do that. So 
So this is a spot where it's pretty open, just gently tucking the cotton in there, and I really don't want to blow it through the other side. And if these planks were tired, I would be stuffing it in there, but they're not tired and they're gonna swell. So I'm just tucking in there for now and we'll swell the boat. And before we fill these gaps with paying compound, we can come through and just double check and give all the caulking another thunk and make sure that everything's set in there good after these planks swell a little bit. With all the seams that could be safely caulked done, the work turned to bunging the holes from all the rivets and the screws. And of course they're made of oak for the oak planks and cedar for the cedar planks. A big shout out to Hunt for making the lion's share of them, a couple thousand at the very least that he did in his own shop. Things and 